goodness, with face, pat, and tiz. Okay, man. Yeah, man. Gucci, man. My turn is how it's swag. My you feeling, man? When you, man, a, man. when you see a lion hair, what is it? Man. Man, <laughs> man. It's all still a state. When you got one chicken, ain't no sides. What you got? A man. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna stop acting stupid now. Uh, because this is this is for real. But I I'm just it's one of them nights. Uh we feeling good, we feeling great, feeling great, feeling good. How are you? Um basically, we about to get all up into this shit. Uh so basically I'm gonna start it all with the positive black news. You know, I like to kick it all with some just beautiful shit, you know, some of the cool shit that we are out here doing as black people, you know, engaging in starting active receiving whatever you want to call it you did um but yeah that's what we're gonna get into so let's get into it um the first story tonight is from nbcnews.com historically black college in south carolina is offering free tuition we want to make sure you can perform with excellence without excuse clinton college's president said a small, historically black college in South Carolina is offering all full-time students free tuition for the upcoming 2021-22 academic year. Clinton College President, President Lester McCorn made the announcement last week for qualifying full-time students at the school in Rock Hill. The school had already made, made a... <laughs> look at, look at. No. I can't the school had already made the commitment to slash fall tuition by 50% for its students and offer every student a new tablet, news reports reported. Um, so basically, now the college is making tuition free as the school hopes to ensure their students get a college education despite financial hardships brought on by the COVID-19 pandemic. So we got a black college, HBCU, representing Clinton College. Let's go. Rock Hill, South Carolina, stand up. Um, I think this is one of the dopest things I've read. Uh, as a person who is currently living under the burden of student loan debt, um, I can appreciate this beautiful blessing that they are given. Uh, now, they are not very expensive. They're only what? about five grand for full-time students for a semester, a full year costs about 10 grand. So we're not looking at like HU or, or the other HU, Howard, or, you know, North, like one of the more well-known HBCUs. We're talking about one that's a little less known, but the beautiful part is they offer free college. I see them. how you snuck in HU shit in there. <laughs> oh, you better believe it. You know what it is. You know. Um, but what I will say is, this is dope. Uh, the, the financial security and generational wealth you're about to allow a lot of these kids to graduate with is amazing. Like, I don't know if the college really understands the impact they're about to have on this population of students, but this is about to be life-changing. For them. As you graduate with a college education, you're able to earn more in a lifetime without having the debt that usually straps us as we start now, off question. coming out of college. That is my question beautiful. specifically for the level. Are they doing it just for the academic year or are they doing it for like the four day full term? Uh let's see. This is gonna be pretty much for For during the pandemic, it says. Uh -huh. That's good as shit. Especially somebody yeah. in their junior and senior years. You come in yeah. your, you in your junior year, 2020, they wiped that debt this year, yeah. your last year. So you know, what about money? Or you, you, do just, what, you hear me? 
Like, even mm-hmm. if you graduate with half, so say you graduate with $20,000 worth of debt, right? Imagine the the breathability mm-hmm. you graduate with. Like, say even you got a refund check, so you had more than that. So we're going to say you graduated with 30 grand, right? You look at that, that is an amazing... Like your monthly payments is no is is ain't gonna be shit. You feel me? Like you're gonna be able to pay that off and, and kind of pay in chunk because your your actual principal balance is so low. Like that is fucking ridiculous. Thank you, Clinton College. Dope story to start off. I was, I was gonna say like. Being a person that spent majority of his college education kind of paying out of pocket uh, through the family or whatever, that was one of the things that like hindered me from focusing. So, yeah, that's just just the simple fact that you're there and that's the one stress that you don't got to worry about so you can focus on what you need. You're there for pretty much. The number one barrier to me. Finishing college on time. Well, the number two. Number one was me getting kicked out a couple. But the last few times when it took me a a, a little longer than it should have, right? It was always because of money. Somebody had said, like, I got you on the financial part. You just handled school. Man, I would have had my time at least least a few years early. You feel me? So, and I and I I still would have been in my thirties. Don't get me, don't get it twisted. Like I was fucking up for a long time, but I was just saying, shit would have popped off with the bachelor side of the game a lot quicker had I had some financial help as opposed to me having to do it on my own. Like yeah, exactly. And another way you can get to that financial literacy is through actual literacy. Like, it's proven that those who read at a higher level at an earlier age usually do better in school, do better in life. So let's meet the first Black author to create a phonics workbook that drastically improves your reading skills in 30 days or less. Oh, cool. Meet Rosa Higgs. She's a teacher from Berkeley, California, who has proven why phonics instruction matters. Her phonics workbook series entitled Read 40 Hours or Less are designed to help Black students learn to read well and beyond their grade level in less than 40 hours of direct instruction. Across the, so in less than a week's shift at a job, a person, a child, or, or whatever, a Black person can learn to read and above their current level. Across the country, students are experiencing K through 12 crisis in reading skills. In the state of California alone, millions of dollars are spent every year in education, but students and teachers are overwhelmed by COVID-19 and distance learning. And the lack of improved reading skills for many vulnerable black students proves it. The coronavirus was a test of America's ability to provide quality and equitable education to students which led Queen Rosa Higgs to give us Read in 40 Hours or Less. These are her phonics workbook series and jump on them if you are a teacher, K through 12. Look into it. It's a resource that can help your classroom and could just help continue to push literacy because I'm gonna tell you, uh, I ain't gonna tell you why I know, but I know that in the educational system right now, there's a huge gap and a humongous gap, um, and especially in literacy and fundamental math skills. Um, you have, again, fifth graders that are currently really operating at a third or below grade level. You have eighth graders who are currently actually at about a seventh, I mean, a sixth grade or maybe below grade level. So you got to think about that gap, that, that that year of learning we lost. Some kids who had just started making progress lost that. Some kids who had been making progress fine have now kind of stagnated. Some kids who were ahead of grade level have now regressed to being on grade level. So we got to think about these things as we go back into 
just in-person learning. And this is a good resource. So thank you, Queen Rosa Higgs. Look into it. Teachers, people who do education, look into it. That's cool. Yeah, man. I thought it was pretty dope. Uh, the next one. The Queen of Soul. R-E-S-P-C-T. I know what it means to me. Um, Remix? Yes. Respect. This is a new movie that's coming out um, in theaters nationwide. Um, and it's offering a moving insight and homage to Aretha Franklin's faith, artistry, and her legacy. Well, Aretha stands and fans, the movie moment we've long been waiting for is finally, finally here today, just three days shy of the third anniversary of passing the MGM feature film about the one and only Queen of Soul respect his theaters nationwide. So uh, this is for, uh, coming to us via Good Black News. Basically, we got a movie coming up about, about the Queen of Soul's life. Um, I personally am a huge fan of Aretha. Um, the woman is a... Whew. Yeah, she got a she has a strong vocal talent. Like she can hit all ranges. Indeed. And like Maya Angelo, another of our yeah, queens, she, she has a really dope voice. What you said, face? I'm sorry. I bet she was hitting them high notes back in her day. <laughs> because I can't see your face. I don't know how to take that. So I'ma just um the face disclaimer. <laughs> I'm going to move on to the next story. Right <laughs> face disclaimer right there. Yo! Um, <laughs> R-E-S-B-E-C-T. <laughs> I mean that. Um, that now went, that would be to me. That would be way left. Uh, I did not expect us to be talking about Aretha getting no TCB. <laughs> on the backstage. But um, anyway, in the next story, Denzel Washington. This is coming to us from a blackamericaweb.com. Denzel Washington has never been one to go back on his word, so it's no shock to us that he is revisiting a promise that he made in 2007 to Wiley College debate team. Wiley College is an HBCU located in Marshall, Texas. And recently, it received the fourth $100,000 installment of the $1 million, initially, $1 million initially promised by the Washington Family Foundation. Um, he basically pledged this to that school and their debate team, and he has literally lived up to his word um, every year since. So shout out to Denzel for just being a dope brother. Um, ain't came out with a movie in years. But he is spending all of that well-earned um, box office money, and he is dropping nothing but jewels on Wiley College. So, respect to the king for looking out for our HBCU. He had a movie come out recently. Say that one more again. He had a movie come out recently. What was it? He was a detective. Him and um, he was a former detective, and he turned into a, like a security guard or some shit. He was helping somebody else do some um. Some detective work. I forgot the name of it. What's a good ass movie though? I think it came out in 2020. They start putting me up on these kind of movies. And you would know, like with the face is the movie buff. Uh, he sees all of the great movies that are out and the obscure ones that nobody's ever heard about. So you know the um, little things. Yeah. Is that uh, it? What you say? The little things. Yeah, that's it. The little yeah, because it said it came out this year. Well, good ass movie. That's one of that's a great fucking movie. Great, great movie. Thank you for the fat correction. Uh, glad we didn't have to, you know, come back with a retraction. Glad faces here. This is why we have three <coughs> partners because each one has a unique gift. Um, but yeah, so shout out to Denzel for spending that. Uh, what was the name of the movie? Shout that movie out one more time. Uh, the little things. The little things. Shout out for, to him spending that good uh, little things money on a great cause. Um, and shout out him, to the Wiley College debate team. Knowing him, that might not have been the little things money. That might have been money from Man on Fire. That might have been my training day money. You know, man, like, Denzel is in that glory money, man. Denzel is a smart man. You know what I'm saying? So I'm pretty sure he invested all kinds of 
money's way. This is a fact. And uh, Shikari Richardson, beautiful young queen, uh, super fast. Uh, she's about to get a chance to redeem herself. Um, she didn't get to run in the Olympics, but she will get a chance to run against all three of the medalists in the 100 meters um, from the Olympics. So things are finally looking up for track superstar Shikari Richardson after being suspended suspended from Team USA over a positive marijuana test heading into the 2020 Olympics. The athlete now has a second chance and is able to redeem herself at the upcoming Prefontaine Classic in Eugene, Oregon, where she'll race against all three 100-meter Olympic medalists. Team Jamaica's Elaine thompson Hera, Shelly Ann Frazier-Price, and Sherika Jackson. So even though, you know, we, we, we kind of started off Shikari Richardson's story with a roller coaster ride from her, you know, meteoric rise to a kind of set that she's now going to get a chance to redeem herself and she's back on track. So shout out to Queen Shikari. Salute to you. And let's go represent America well. Go kick them girls' asses and uh, let your hair fly in the wind, Queen. You feel me? You know let the bundle shine. You know, um, I really want to know who was the event coordinator for this event because that is genius. That is genius. That is some genius level stuff. I'm like, you know what? What if Shikari is fast? Look how fast she is. Like, we we don't even know what she would have did against the Jamaicans. That's what have been a big question around Black Twitter and all the social medias and whatnot. Indeed. So. This, this was, and then the bragging rights. If she did beat Jamaica, now Jamaica is all known, of them, all three of them. You know, Jamaica is known just for fast running people. I don't even Woo! think they pause. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you, man. I'm telling you, just that running around the sawfish, man. That rice and pea, that oxtail, jerk chicken, everything Irish. You got the, uh, you got the glow and lee. You feel me? I like to crab. say, you know, I like to say, name. shouts out to uh, my oh, tour guy, oh. Jamaica uh, Sugar, the one and only Sugar. Yo, if shout out to King. They, sugar, they lied. That's how he said it. <laughs> shout out to King. Um, and I believe his name was Henry, our driver. Um, shout out to both of y'all. Y'all showed us Jamaica very well. Everything was ivory. And if you ever go to Jamaica and you are coming from America and you want to have a beautiful resort experience to stay at the Royalton, Jamaica, there's no paid ads in any of our podcasts or shows. This is just us showing love. But I'm going to tell you, they treated us right. Um, I got married there. And yeah, in Trelawney, especially, that is the one I'm talking about. So yeah, shout out Jamaica, to them. And, yeah. and this, this last story uh, in the positive black news, this ain't even positive black news. It's just interesting news in general. Um, the census shows that the U.S. is diversified. The white population is shrinking. The census <laughs> figures have been eagerly awaited by states and they are sure to set off an intense partisan battle over representation at a time of deep national division and fights over voting rights. The numbers could help determine the control of the U.S. House in 2022 elections and provide an electoral edge for the next decade. The data will also shape how $1.5 trillion in federal spending is distributed this each year. The figures show continued migration to the South and Southwest and population losses in the Mississippi Delta and Appalachia. The numbers also indicate that the white population is aging and has fallen to its smallest share of the total population on record, though there are some exceptions. The share of the white population actually grew in coastal communities in the Carolinas and Virginia, as well as counties stretching through midsections of Georgia and Alabama. The population of the 18 is increasingly diverse. So what I'm seeing is the younger generation is becoming more and more just kind of fluid. This middle generation is becoming more and more white somehow. And the old white folk are dying off. Um, folks, excuse me. 
we're about to have a large population of just straight up mulattoes. Mixed race. I don't know what you call them these days. I don't know what the PC term is. Teach me. Don't get mad at me. Just teach me. Just don't know. I, I seen one. Whatever I, you call the mixed race people, they are about to be the dominant group in society in America. So I, saw, I just thought I, that was interesting. I saw one where they said um, in a lot of places, it's like a lot of mix of uh, Spanish and Asian or whatever, which I'm not surprised or whatever. If y'all ever been to Virginia Beach? Yeah. Yeah. Got a lot of friends, the Spanish and Asian anyway. Indeed, indeed. Well, um, that does the positive black news for the week. I hope some of the stories gave you inspiration. I hope it made you think. I hope it made you um want to go and research some of these black people that are movers and shakers in our world. And you know, with love and grace, I pass it on to the king of the lists, the questions, the segments that make you go. Hmm. You know, you know. <laughs>